everyone welcome back to today's learning with me for today we are going to learn about something familiar that we often experience inflammation and tissue repair inflammation usually occurs shortly after we injure ourselves like paper cut in that time we will experience pain heat and swelling several body mechanisms occur to heal the wound what is the mechanism? Are there many types of inflammatory response? And how is the process of repairing the tissues? We will cover all of them today, so stay tuned and let's begin. We will start from the basic. Inflammation is the reactions of vascularized tissue to local injury that involves cellular, humoral, chemical, and of course, the tissue participation. We can say that inflammation is also one of the most important and useful defense mechanism. When inflammation occurs, a series of changes happen in the terminal vascular bed, blood, and connective tissues to neutralize destroy and limit the spread of invading and harmful agents and prepare any damaged tissue for repair. Without an adequate inflammatory response, none of us will leave, because our wound will not heal and minor infections will quickly become overwhelmed. That's why inflammation is very significant to our body. But inflammatory responses are not perfect. They can be potentially harmful and also one of the most common cause of injury to our own tissues like people with SLE. So, what causes inflammation to happen? Well, there is two factors, outside and inside of the body. Exogenous are divided into five types. Let's look at the example of each type. Meanwhile, endogenous consist of tissue ischemia such as myocardial infarctions or pulmonary embolism. Inflammation is divided acute and chronic. The difference between these categories lies in the duration and effect, which is longer and more severe in chronic with scar formations and deformity. Here are the five most common symptoms of inflammation. We can see all of this in the body's general responses, such as fever, injury of parenchymal organs, and many more. Now, let's focus on the inflammatory process. Inflammation occurs through the same process, although it has different causes. This process begins with increased vascular permeability, followed by leukocyte immigration, and then phagocytosis. For example, when we endure it ourselves, immediately there will be a vascular response, such as vasoconstriction, hyperemic response, and an increase in capillary permeability to direct toxic and irritating agents, and localizing the spread of infectious agents. After that, the separations of the intercellular junction of the endothelium will form fluid exudate that carries important components to the area of inflammation like antibodies, fibrinogen, and many more. Then, there is leukocyte immigration. It's begun with leukocytic marginations and rolling followed by addition molecules. Then, all mortal white blood cells immigrate out of the blood vessels with neutrophils and monocytes as the most active and lymphocytes as the slowest. After extravasation, Leukocytes immigrate in the tissue to the injured site by a process known as chemotaxis. Chemotaxis factors can be either exogenous or endogenous. After that, phagocytosis occurs. Phagocytosis is the recognition and attachment of particles to the surface of phagocytes. The phagocytic cells will then engulf and destroy the foreign particles. Now, let's talk about leukocytes. Leukocytes are the type of cell in the body consisting of several types, such as neutrophils, macrophages, eosinophils, lymphocytes, plasma cells, basophils, and mast cells. In inflammation, there is a proliferative stage involving the endothelium, macrophages, and fibroblast. This process occurs in advanced stage of inflammation. The next topic is inflammatory mediator. So, what is the mediator? These are chemical substances that cause or participate in inflammations and originate either from plasma or cells. 
Most of them perform their biologic activity by initially binding to the specific receptors on target cells and stimulate the release of mediators by target cells themselves. Most of them have potentially harmful effect. Now, there are many mediators for inflammation that divided into two types produced from cell and from body fluids. We can also divide all of the mediators based on functions. Let's take a look. Inflammatory response is closely intertwined with the process of repair. One of its ways is through regeneration, where healthy cells near the damaged site proliferate and move for repair. Regeneration is divided into two types, complete and incomplete regeneration. It is called complete regeneration if the new tissue is the same as the lost structure and functions, while incomplete regeneration is when the granulation tissues proliferate to fill defect and is replaced by scar. Regeneration differs in two matters. First, the capacity of cell regeneration, like stable and permanent cells. Second, the process of regeneration in various tissue, such as epithelial tissue, fibrous tissue, and blood vessels. In connective tissue repair, the body used a young connective tissue, which in young fibroblasts and capillaries, to form the scar tissue. The rough morphology of this tissue is usually like this. These capillaries will proliferate and migrate into the vein and give the granulation tissue an edematous appearance. It works as follows. Next is wound healing. Wound healing is the replacement of damaged tissue by healthy tissue which consists of three stages, leading an exudate, acute inflammation, and wound contraction. Wound healing is divided into two types. First, intention healing is a clean wound with a small distance between the boundaries. Meanwhile, second intentions healing has more severe characterized like this. This will result as follows. The wound healing process is influenced by various factors that can slow or speed up the process. Factors that slow down the wound healing process consist of local factors, including the type of wound agent, infection, foreign body in the wound, and many more. Meanwhile, common factors that slow wound healing include injury, poor nutrition, and many more. Next, factor that can accelerate wound healing consists of ultraviolet light, administrations of anabolic steroids, and many more. Okay everyone, let me conclude today's lesson. First, we talked about inflammation and the inflammatory process. In addition, we have studied the process of wound regeneration and healing. But what if there are alterations to your immune system? Are the symptoms the same? What happens to us when we become hypersensitive? You will find out in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.